I just completed the lead code contest on February 6th, the morning off. Um, this is another great DP problem. And when I was doing it, I thought there's a really good amount of teaching material here. So I thought I'd make a video. Um, I'll let you read the description here. I'm not going to go over it. And then let's just get to the problem solving. So you can pause if you need to. Uh, let me move my window up a little bit. I'm going to move it up all the way here. Okay, so what we need to do is we can attend up to K events and the events that we attend cannot overlap. So if we attend a day on day that ends on day four, we can att attend another one that starts on day four. So with DP problems, there's two parts, maybe three parts. Here's, here's how I did it and maybe it'll help you out. The first thing I, you know, that you have to do obviously is to sort the events. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay. And then what we're going to do is uh, we're going to DFS. So our goal is to, um, our goal is to go to this event. Okay. And let's say we can attend two events. Our goal is to go into this event, okay, and capture the points, and then check what event can we go to next, and then capture that, and then, you know, continue that way. Then we go all the way back, and we say, all right, now let's pretend we don't go to this event and go to this event. So this is not in sorted order. It would actually look like this. And then we're like, all right, what if we just start at this event? What's going to happen? And that's the part we want to code the, if I go here, what will be the result of the remaining sub problems? Okay. That's kind of uh, the, the DP approach. Now here, I'm going to show you the, how you want to divide your DP problem into two parts, one without the memo, and then how to figure out how you want to use the memo. Cause I know that a lot of these solutions, they kind of just, throw the memo right off the bat and you're kind of confused on wait how did they come up with how they're going to use the memo but turns the way I learned it is the memo comes at the end when you start realizing what variables are changing okay so we're going to ignore the memo for now okay so we're just going to do return dfs we're going to pass in events the number of events we can still attend and the i and the index we're going to start at okay now this index is going to be an index for an event that we can go to right away. So we're going to, you know, that assumes that um, it's not overlapping with any of our previous events. And I'll show you later how we're going to uh, assure that. Now let's go ahead and uh, create this function. Okay. So what are some of our base cases, right? If the, if we only have one event that's left to attend, okay, let's just check how many events there are in front of us and just attend the best one. Okay. We don't have to check for if K is equal to zero because our function will never get to that spot. And we don't have to check, check for IDX equals out of bounds. Cause once again, our function will not get to that spot. Um, I'll show you in a bit how that, how we show that. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna just look ahead for all of our events that are coming up and just pick the best one because we can only attend one anyway. Okay, now um, here we're gonna do okay. What if k is more than two? You know, like what if it's like ten and we got like a whole bunch of the stuff in front of us? Well, let's let's go ahead and see what we can do. So, um, what we're gonna have to do is iterate through all of the events that are in front of us. Notice how we're starting at a viable event and then we're going forward because this will automatically solve sub problems. So if I attend ith event, 
I'm going to get this value, right? Now I have to answer, what event can I attend next? So these guys are already in sorted order. So if I'm attending the ith event, I'm going to have to check what's going to be the next event that I can attend. Okay. We check that by just doing a quick loop. So it's going to start at i plus 1. Now we're going to see, okay, if events at j at 0, so the start of the jth events event is greater than events at i at 1, then we can event, we can attend the jth, jth event. <clears throat> so how do we attend the jth event? Simple. We just DFS into that, right? Okay, so what we're doing is we find the jth event, the next event after i, and maybe even all the other ones. Maybe we just like skip out, skip over that one, and we kind of check, um, ch uh, if, attend this one. Maybe not attend this one. Maybe not attend this one, and find the best one, best one, best j that gives us the best answer. Okay, um, and we reduce k by one, and we go ahead and attend that. Okay. Now, um, what if, you know, we're not always, you know, going to necessarily have to attend K events? What if, you know, one of the examples up there uh, is this one where we only need to attend one event, not necessarily two, even though we can attend two. That, in that case, we might not always go into this for loop. So this ret equals math that max might not always happen. So we also want to double check and make sure to do... Uh, Ret equals uh, just val in case we just attend this one and we don't go in here, okay? Because that, that way it's going to be zero. And then finally, we're done. Okay, so this is without memo, okay? And uh, if you get stuck here, then maybe um, rewatch or let me know what part I was not clear on and I'll definitely answer your question. So you get to this part, right? Especially on leak code, what you can do is, you know, test with these uh, smaller cases. They're not going to TLE on you, okay? And we're getting seven, which is what we expect because we're going to attend this one and this one. And you can you can test with all of these uh, small cases, but it will TLE if you uh, you know submit. So now the question is, how do we implement memo? And <clears throat> this is the realization that I had when I was learning DP. What's the point of memo, okay? Memo is used to make sure that we don't do multiple calculations, you know, the same calculation more than once. How do we know what calculations are gonna be made? Well, let's look at our function DFS and the variables that were taken in. Which one of these variables changes? K changes and IDX changes. So what we're gonna need is a memo of size K by size idx okay so basically anytime we're going into this function where k is a certain number like three and idx is like four and if we have already computed the answer for three by four we're just going to pull it out of our memo okay so that's how you figure out how to set up your memo so if you have like a dfs that has like three parameters that are changing like three variables that are changing you're going to have a three-dimensional memo if you have a DFS that has five variables that change, you're going to have a five-dimensional memo, and they're all going to be the sizes of the variables that change. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, implement our memo. All right, so IDX goes from zero to events.length. K goes from one to K plus one. So since this is not zero index, we want to do K plus one. And let's go ahead and pass the memo in. And then here we do the actual check. Okay. And then we also have to pass it in here. And then we actually have to set it here. 
okay now our memo set up that's how you, that's that's the easiest way to do memo i know I, I used to get stuck on this on this part so much in the past but that's that makes it super easy for me at least let's go ahead and sh make sure okay we got a compiler error <clears throat> oh we got to add uh int here finished let's go ahead and submit and accepted oh you can't see it but Ah, my window is not even going up that high, but it's accepted here. I'll show you. There you go. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, and yeah, thank you.